I am Coach Andrew. I'm here to answer your questions. And today we have a question from another friend on TikTok. If you haven't checked out my TikTok, that link is down in the description along with all of my other links. Feel free to check those out. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. Consider sending me an email or leaving a comment with your own question so that I can film a video and answer it for you. But today's question comes from a young man on TikTok who wants to know what I think and how I feel about MGTOW and the red pill movement. So for those of you who aren't familiar, or who are at least less familiar than I am, which is not that familiar with MGTOW, it stands for Men Going Their Own Way, M-G-T-O-W. Um, it's also kind of associated with something called the red pill movement, which is um, essentially men who have taken the red pill which is a reference to the Matrix movies, where if you take the red pill, you learn the truth and you can't go back. Or if you take the blue pill, you stay asleep and you get to live inside the Matrix, living a false reality. Right, so uh, the men's, from my understanding, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, the, uh, the men's rights movement, the, the MGTOW movement, um, the, I don't want to say anti-feminist, um, but the, it is a men's movement. They have adopted the phrase red pill. And um, a lot of them have also taken up the title of MGTOW, men going their own way. What this essentially means, from my understanding, is that these are men who are consciously choosing to avoid getting married. Um, they want to avoid having kids. And um, I, I, I actually follow a couple MGTOW channels. I've watched some of these videos. I've read some articles. Um, I have a very basic understanding of the message that they're trying to get across, which is basically that men are getting screwed over in today's society. Um, a lot of them are, are pretty strongly against um, modern feminism because of what it has done to masculinity, what it has done to men, um, the way that it is misleading women and encouraging women to act in ways that are not beneficial to them and especially to men. They cite a lot of issues um, with marriage. Um, you know, you can look at the number of rich and powerful men who have been divorced and all of their wealth is given away to the woman. They lose their houses. They always lose custody of their children. Men get screwed over in the justice system. Um, I, I've seen a lot of MGTOW men not just speak out against feminism and women, but also speak out against like society as a whole because um, men make up the large majority of violent crime, they make up the majority of workplace deaths, the majority of suicides. Um, I think men, and probably women too in their own way, but men have a mental health epidemic right now. Um, and they're right about a lot of this stuff. Unfortunately, I think the people in the men's rights community and the MGTOW community are right about a lot of these things. Now, I've also seen a lot of MGTOW guys who... Um, are big in the dating scene. I, I don't know if this is the majority of them or not. If, if you're part of this community, please let me know in the comments. Um, but I've seen lots of videos from MGTOW guys talking about dating, right? Um, a lot of them are still interested in women, but they're completely unwilling to commit to a relationship, right? They, they don't think it's worth it. Um, they think a lot of these women are not willing to do the same either. They think a lot of women are hypergamous. Um, which means that they're constantly going to be moving between men. They're not willing to settle down. They don't know what they want. They won't commit. So why should men bother, right? Women say that they want one thing. They say they want a loving, caring man, but they always end up going for, you know, the chads, the guys who are mean, disrespectful, um, not willing to commit to a relationship. And um, this has all culminated in the terrible scene that we have today where no one really knows how to have a good relationship anymore, it seems. So that's my basic understanding of what MGTOW is. And now I also have to state my own personal bias because I am married, I have a family, I have two daughters. Um, I married my high school sweetheart. I've known her since I was about five years old. She's the only woman I've ever been with. I'm monogamous, she's monogamous. Um, we have a great relationship and I'm not scared of marriage or relationships. Um, in any way, shape, or form. Growing up, my parents stayed together, her parents stayed together, we both had stable family environments. Um, I think we're pretty solid. But that being said, I don't, I don't blame the MGTOW community for what they're doing. In fact, I support them. 
I agree with a lot of their grievances. I think men are screwed over in a lot of ways. I think women are being screwed over in a lot of ways for a lot of different reasons. I think a lot of them don't know how to date anymore because they were never shown. So many people grew up in single parent households or at least were exposed to single parent households. A lot of people had parents that were way too young, right? Teenage pregnancy. It's no wonder that people are struggling to have stable relationships in today's age because so many of our parents didn't have stable relationships. I mean, 50% of marriages end in divorce. You know, I'm sure throughout human history, it's, it's never been easy to have stable relationships. I'm sure it's never been a simple thing. It's probably always been complicated. And, um, you know, back in the day, they used to arrange marriages. And I'm not advocating for that, but it was much more simple, right? There was less to worry about. You didn't have to worry about your feelings because it wasn't about you. It was about your family. It was about bringing families together. And uh, you did your duty, because it was your duty. You married who you were told to marry, you had a family, and you did your job. You didn't have a lot of choices back then. I'm not saying it was better, but it was more simple. We live in a world now that is anything but simple, right? We try to choose our partner based on love and how we feel. It becomes very egocentric. It's about you. It's about how you feel, what you want, what kind of future you want to have. And it's less about your partner. It's less about trying to make it work because you have to, and more about, can I still get out of this if it doesn't work, right? Everyone wants a backup plan. No one's really willing to commit. People don't take their wedding vows seriously anymore. You know, weddings are all about the ceremony. It's all about the pictures. It's about Instagram. It's not about the commitment. It's not about the oath anymore. You know, I think we've lost a lot of that symbolism, and I think relationships have, uh, relationships are no longer sacred to most people. And I think that's a shame. And I think that's largely responsible for why relationships fail so much today and why the dating scene is such a mess. Now, do I have my critiques of MGTOW? I mean, sure, I'll have my critiques of anything. I'll have my critiques of specific people who say specific things. And I will applaud other people who belong to the same side but say different things. It all depends on the situation. If you are a man going your own way, why are you doing it? Why are you going your own way? That, I mean, that's the main question. I would assume that you asked me what I think about this because you either are MGTOW or you're considering becoming MGTOW and you're wondering if it's smart. So let me propose a few questions to you that might help you make that decision a little bit easier. First question is going to be, why are you doing it? Why are you doing this? Is it because you don't trust women? Is it because you don't think there are any good women out there? Because... That's wrong. That's not true. There are a lot of great women out there. It might just be that you've been looking in the wrong places. It might just be that you've been hurt in the past and you don't trust women anymore. Maybe you had a mother that you didn't get along with and because of her you don't trust women. Those are all fair, right? Your, your feelings are valid. But before you go casting a blanket generalization on the entire female population, you need to sit down and really ask yourself, is this true? Is this likely to be true? And you're gonna have to tell yourself no. I, I filmed a video the other day about how to find a good woman and my advice might not be the best advice out there because I've been with my wife for so long, um, but it might just come down to where you're looking. You might just be looking in the wrong places. Maybe you don't have a clear enough image of the kind of woman that you're looking for and it might come down to you. It might just be that you're not a desirable man Maybe you're, maybe you're not fit. Maybe you don't have a good job. Maybe you're not stable enough to make the kind of woman that you want feel safe. There could be so many reasons why your relationships haven't been working out. And you need to explore all of those reasons before you become a monk and swear women off. Or just become a lifelong hustler and play the dating game all day. You know, that, that, I don't see that as desirable. If you do, then it could totally be a valid lifestyle for you. And I hold nothing against you. Just make sure that your reasons for, for doing this are pure, right? Do this because you want to do this. Do this because you don't want kids. You don't want a family. You don't want to be married. And you have good reasons for those things. You don't want a family. You don't want to be married because you want to travel. Because you want to dedicate 100% of yourself to working out and building your career. You want to build a company. Um, 
you know, maybe you're just asexual and you're not attracted to women or men and you just, you just want to be you. You know, that's a good reason too. You can have good reasons for these things. Just convince yourself that they're good reasons. Practice them with purity and with virtue. Then if you're going to be MGTOW, be MGTOW and own it. That's great, man. If you don't have a family, if you don't have a wife, you can do a lot of things that I can't. I love my family. I love my wife. I'm a family man before anything else. There's nothing else in the world I would rather do than spend time with my wife and kids. That's me. That might not be you. And that's fine. More power to you. Go build a business. Go become a professional bodybuilder. Travel the world. Become a scientist. Make a discovery. Do what you're called to do. But do it for the right reasons. Don't don't do something now because it seems like a good decision and it makes you feel good now that has a high likelihood of bringing you a lot of pain later on. Try to avoid that. That's my best advice to you. Another thing that I think you need to consider is how much of this decision that you're making is coming from other people. How much of your decision to take up a title, to, to join the clan of MGTOW and become part of a group that you didn't make, how much of that desire is coming from external pressure? How much of your decision-making process is being guided by society, by culture, by counterculture, by YouTubers or influencers or people you know, whatever the case, how much of this decision is being made by other people? It's very hard to be honest with yourself with this particular question because the truth is most of us don't make our own decisions. We make decisions based on the things we've been taught, the things we grew up with, the things we're familiar with, and the messages that we hear from people we look up to for reasons that might not even be relevant to the information, right? If some guy's successful, you're gonna take him more seriously because he's successful. But just because he's financially successful doesn't mean he knows anything about relationships. You see what I'm saying? A lot of your information that you use to make your decisions comes from external sources. Look at those very critically. Because right now, we live in a culture where there are, there are talking heads everywhere. There's information coming from the internet, coming from the television coming from social media, coming from friends, coming from people on the street. It's, it's pouring in. And most of these people don't know what they're talking about. Very few people know what they're talking about about anything. I hardly know what I'm talking about about anything, but I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to be honest. Some people are going to benefit from my advice. Others won't. Make sure you're getting advice from people who know what they're doing or you're at least getting information that's going to benefit you somehow. It's, it's not just pointless noise. I think there is a significant number, I'm not going to say it's a majority or not, but there's a significant number of people in the MGTOW community who I think are just men who are hurt. And that's okay. This is not a criticism of them. I completely empathize. I, I sympathize with that. But I think a lot of these men are just hurt. They weren't given enough attention by women when they were young. Maybe they had toxic relationships. Maybe they had problems with their mother. They have problems with women. Maybe they have problems with their dad. There, there could be a whole number of reasons why relationships aren't working out for them, why women aren't working out for them. And it's not going to be entirely their fault. In fact, it's, it's probably, it's pro at most, it's probably 25 or 50% their fault. It, it's probably mostly society. It's mostly going to be the education system. And a lot of it's going to have to do with women too, because a lot of women today are also hurt. There's a lot of very confused young women out there who don't know what they want because they were raised being told that they could be anything, which is true. You can all be anything if you work for it, if you believe in it, if it's what you really want, you can be anything. Most people don't know what they want. They were told, be an astronaut, be a lawyer, be a doctor, be a scientist. And all these giddy little millennials and Zoomers and Gen Xers, they went to college, they got their degree, they did their thing, they tried to fit in, and now they're 30 and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And that's just where most of us are. There's a lot of people who were raised believing that men and women are exactly the same. And that's not true either. There are some women who are more masculine than men. And there are some men who are more feminine than a lot of women. 
Those are outliers. They're on the ends of the bell curve. Men and women do have differences, right? We have biological differences. If you don't believe me, there's a really good book by Dr. Brezending called The Female Brain. Go read it. It's all about the science. Biological differences between men and women. Psychology, emotions, physiology. It's wild. Men and women are way more similar than they are different. Way more similar. We have so much more in common than we have in difference. But we are different. And there's a lot of people who are unwilling to accept that. And because of those people who think that gender is just a social construct and men and women are exactly the same and they should be treated exactly the same and they should have the exact same outcomes in society and in life, those, because of those people and their unwillingness to accept facts, there's a whole other movement now on the other side of the aisle that believes men and women are like black and white. That men and women are completely different. And they refuse to give any wiggle room to the people on the other side of the aisle. But the people on that crazy side of the aisle, they have a point. Some women are more masculine. Some women want to go into STEM. They want to be engineers and lawyers. We should probably have more female engineers and doctors. As long as that's what those women want. Women bring a lot to the table. We need more female politicians. We'd probably have fewer wars, and that would be a great thing. But we've got these two sides now who are both shouting this, Polaroid, this polarized view of gender of men and women, and they've created this gender war. And they're both wrong in a lot of ways. And that's where a lot of these people are getting their information from, right? All the, the blue pill people are on this side and all the red pill MGTOW people are on this side. And I think a lot of people are just saying things because they're mad, because they've been hurt, because they're so angry at one side for what it did to them that they're now taking up arms on the other side, even though it's kind of the same thing. They know they're still kind of being unhealthy. They're still being a little bit extreme. And for a lot of people, I think it's, I think it's just kind of about revenge. There are some MGTOW people out there who just don't like women. I think some of them are being spiteful. I think, I think some of them were hurt, right? And it's the same thing with a lot of these women too. A lot of the, the extreme feminists, I think a lot of them were hurt too. A lot of them were lied to. I think a lot of these people who have these very polarizing political views and these opinions on social issues are just people who were hurt. And we've all been hurt, we're all damaged. You know, just because I'm a little more moderate and I'm not MGTOW and I'm not a feminist doesn't mean I'm any more balanced than any of those people. <laughs> Trust me, I got my own problems, believe me. And just because I said all these things about these two groups of people doesn't mean it's always true either. There's a lot of MGTOW people with very pure reasons and intents and there's a lot of feminists with very pure motivation. You know, it's, it's a complicated world, my friend. You just gotta figure out where you fit in all of it. You can take whatever you will from that rant. My only point is that you need to know what you're doing, you need to know your reasons for doing it, and you need to make sure that they are your reasons. It's okay to learn from other people, but never just believe what people say without thinking about it first. And that goes for me too. You know, don't take anything I say at face value. Think about it for yourself, come to your own conclusion, make a decision that works for you, and try not to end up hurting yourself 10 or 20 years down the road. If you think there's a chance that you might want a family, you might want kids, you might want a wife, someone to sit in a rocking chair with when you're 75 years old, don't be MGTOW. If you need to experiment with it for a couple years, fine, but don't close yourself off from opportunities because here's the truth, here's the truth. If there's a chance, if there's even a chance that if you found that perfect woman who was perfect for you, she was looking for a man like you, if you found her, but because you believed you were MGTOW, you let her slip through your fingers, she's gone. She might be walking down the street one day and pass right by you, but because, but because in your own head, you're MGTOW, she walked right past you and she's gone. That could have been the one. You know, you have to consider that. I fully support MGTOW, but it is kind of extreme. Swearing off relationships is kind of extreme. So don't close yourself off to opportunities. Um, you can totally be conscious about working on yourself and being single for a little bit 
and not worrying about women, you can do that without calling yourself MGTOW. You can do that without having to make, you know, some kind of crazy commitment or anything like that. And I could be totally misunderstanding what MGTOW is. I don't know if there's a commitment or anything like that. But um, I think it probably varies from man to man. But just make your own decision. That's how it should be anyways. Group mentalities are dangerous. So anyways, this video has been going on for a while. I'm going to end it here. I hope my opinions were helpful. I hope this information um, is something that you can think about for yourself. Come to your own decision. And um, whatever you choose to do, I wish you the very best, my friend. Set big goals. Work hard. Do what you need to do to follow your path. And you'll find your way. It's not always easy. It's not always obvious. We're all walking the path. So you do you, brother. Have a good day. If you guys have questions, leave them in the comments. Send them to the email. Check out my links in the description. Be sure to subscribe. I'll be back in the next video. You guys take care.